What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Chris Bassett, who had five Ks in six innings, giving up two runs. He had these cutters and got this sword as well as this front door two-seamer. Well, it was kind of knocking on the front door. And this beautiful slow curveball. He faced Zach Gallon, who had five Ks in five innings, giving up three runs and had this cutter and fastball. Marcus Stroman had this two-seamer and sinker and had three Ks in six innings, giving up one run. He now has the most quality starts in all of baseball. And his ERA this year is 2.88. He battled James Paxton, who had four Ks in three innings, giving up six runs, and had this fastball, curveball, and nasty cutter. Sean Armstrong was the opener and had two Ks in two innings, giving up only one hit and no runs, and he had these cutters. I mean, Armstrong had to be a pitcher with that name, right? I'm waiting for Joey Noodlearm to be a pitcher. Freddie Peralta had six Ks in six scoreless innings, giving up only one hit. He had these painted fastballs as well as this paint dish one. But that was really close, as well as his slider and change-ups, and just dominated all day. Braxton Garrett had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up four runs, and had this cutter and change-up. Andrew Heaney had four Ks in five and a third scoreless innings, thanks to his elevated fastballs and change-ups. Heaney's release point is only five feet off the ground, which helps him with those elevated fastballs getting that attack angle. He battled Gavin Williams, who had four Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, and had this slider and changeup. Pablo Lopez had seven Ks in five and two-thirds innings, but gave up seven runs. He had this curveball, including this one that got the bend the knee, as well as his fastball. Still not the outing that we've come to expect from Pablo. Clark Schmidt had eight Ks in six innings, giving up two runs. He had these vicious cutters, as well as these wicked sweepers. Michael Lorenzen proved why he was an all-star with seven Ks in six and two-thirds innings, giving up two hits and no runs. He had this change-up as well as this slider and these sweepers and looked really good. And sometimes just being an all-star gives you a little bump, especially in terms of confidence. He outdueled George Kirby, who had four Ks in five innings but gave up six runs. He did have this hammer curveball, as well as a fastball up to 99 miles an hour. Blake Snell was outstanding yet again with seven Ks in five scoreless innings, lowering his ERA to 2.71 this year. He relied on his fastball, his slider, and curveballs, including this curveball that bounced in front of the plate and somehow Castellanos hit this. I originally thought this was a drop third strike. And I'm still not entirely sure that Blake had a throw to first base because he may have caught this on the fly. I have no idea what happened here. Here's an overlay of Snell's fastball and curveball, and you can see the drop on that curveball. He throws it just like his fastball. There's no hump in it, and it just dives. Snell has had a .51 ERA since the Padres signed Gary Sanchez. Amazing. And he now has a 21-inning scoreless streak. Probably the hottest pitcher in baseball. He faced Ranger Suarez, who had three Ks, including this painted fastball. Taiwan Walker had three Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, and had these dirty splitters. Spencer Strider had 10 Ks in six innings, but gave up five runs. And a lot of the hits he gave up came with two strikes. He was a little sloppy in putting hitters away. He had these nasty change-ups and sliders, and got a sword on this slider. And of course, had his overpowering fastball. He actually hit 101 in this game, because I think he was kind of pissed off at all the runs being scored. Here's Spencer Strider's mechanics from a side view, and you can really see how well he uses his legs, both his back leg and the bracing with his front leg. I mean, his nickname's Quadzilla. It's no wonder he uses his legs so well. You can also see how much extension he gets. He releases the ball seven feet from the rubber, despite the fact he's only five foot 11. This makes his fastball get on hitters even faster. Strider battled Lance Lynn, who had six Ks in five and a third innings, but gave up four earned runs and had this changeup and fastball. Lynn must need a vacation because as he was walking off here, he seemed to say he wanted fun on a sun beach. 
All right, maybe I'm not that good a lip reader. He also did impressively get Ronald Acuna to hit himself in the face with his own chain. Ouch. Alec Marsh had 11 Ks in six innings, giving up only two runs, thanks to his fastballs and sliders. He was just really good all game. And I really didn't have on my bingo card that he would have more Ks than Tyler Glasnow, who he faced. Glasnow had seven Ks in six innings, giving up only one run, thanks to these fastballs and sliders, and of course his hammer curveballs, and got a sword on this one. Framber Valdez had 13 strikeouts in six and a third innings, but gave up five runs. Valdez relied on his mix of fastballs, curveballs, and cutters. In fact, he had 12 whiffs on his curveball and cutter, with 67% whiff rate for the game. When his curveball and cutter are on, he does generate a ton of whiffs. He faced Reed Detmers, who had six Ks in six innings, but gave up four runs and had this nasty slider. Tony Gonsolin had three Ks in five innings, giving up one run, and had this splitter. He only threw 54 pitches in this game, and I needed him to get to four Ks to win the parlay I picked for MLB. Someone should have sent me a memo that he was only going to throw 54 pitches. Gonsolin battled Kodai Senga, who was my co-filthiest starting pitcher of the day yesterday. Senga went six innings with nine Ks, nice, giving up four hits and only one run. He relied on his mix of upper 90s fastballs, cutters, as well as, of course, his ghost forks. Here's an overlay of the ghost fork with his fastball, and you can see why that ghost fork is one of the best pitches in baseball, with nearly a 60% whiff rate. Senga's ERA this year is now 3.2, and he has a 2.37 ERA in his last six starts. Senga said the biggest thing for him is he's getting used to the bigger baseball in MLB. In Japan, they use a slightly smaller baseball. And when you're throwing a fork ball, the size of the ball matters. Alex Cobb had five Ks in six innings, giving up only one run, and had this splitter, as well as these two seamers, although a couple of them probably weren't in the zone. But we'll take them. He battled yesterday's other co-filthiest starting pitcher, Johan Oviedo, who had 10 Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run. He had his overpowering fastball working as well as these vicious sliders. Just a great outing by Oviedo, and I love how he gets fired up after his 10th K. Well done. Now onto my filthiest relievers. You all Piumps had these nasty sliders, including the cross-up on the first one. Felix Bautista had this dirty 90 mile an hour splitter. Araldus Chapman had his heaters up to 102 miles an hour and his K stairs going. Pete Fairbanks had this 101.3 mile an hour fastball, which I think is the fastest fastball he's thrown in his career. Steven Okert had these filthy sliders. But my filthiest relievers of the day were a tie. First, we have Gregory Santos, who had this 99 mile an hour turbo sinker. And then this 100 mile an hour sinker that made Jason Benetti call out to Pitching Ninja. Oh, swing that is going to be on Pitching Ninja, I think. <laughs> Yikes. And boy, he was right. That pitch is disgusting. He tied Arcia into a pretzel. My other co-filthiest pitch from a reliever yesterday was this amazing wrong way slider by Dowry Moretta. This thing went 17 inches arm side on a slider. What the f***? Look how much arm side movement this thing has. This has to break a hitter's brain. He thinks he's getting a slider that's going to go glove side and instead it breaks freaking 17 inches arm side. I kind of need big boy calling this pitch. Oh, Lord, what is that? He's a magician. Here's a slow-mo of his wrong way slider's release. And you can see he doesn't throw it like a screwball. He releases it just like a slider, except its spin axis is just a little bit off. And it's got very low spin efficiency at about 25%. You can see why he throws that slider over 60% of the time, and it has a 41% whiff rate. Absolutely ridiculous stuff. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. Very few things sum up the Mets season better than this. But seriously, look at the path this fly ball took. The thing's doing loop-de-loops out here. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. 
First, I'm going to start out with the same game parlay of Reese Olsen for 5Ks or more and Bryce Miller for 6Ks or more. And then I'm going to top it off with Josiah Gray for 5Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 